Hello my quilting friends! My name is Leah Day and welcome to this Frame Quilting Friday video. So I have been getting a lot of questions about quilting pantographs on the Q-Zone frame. So I made a plain piece of fabric here and put it on the frame and I'm just learning this guys. I really am just learning the basics of using pantographs on this frame and I'm really pulling a lot of information of what I learned on my other frame, on the continuum frame, which is a traditional three rail frame, this is very different because you're not only shifting forward and back and advancing the quilt through the frame, but you're also having to shift side to side. So I share how I did this the very first time, <laughs> which means I learned a lot in this video. It's not gonna come out perfect your first time, it didn't come out perfect for me, but I promise you we will learn a lot together. So I hope you enjoy this video learning more about pantographs on the Q-Zone frame. So here we are at the back of the Q-Zone frame and the very first step to quilting pantographs on any frame is to figure out the limits of your frame. And on the Q-Zone this is ever so slightly tricky because you've got kind of got, it's just kind of a slightly odd build and you need to be very careful not to, you know, not to think that you have a lot more space than you actually have to quilt in because you have to take into account the fact that the quilt's gonna build up in this space right here. That as you roll up the quilt, that's gonna build up space. And if that builds up space, I want you to see, then that's gonna increase the space taken up here on the machine so it's not going to be able to go as far forward and you can see down here on the laser light then that affects how far it goes so if i place my pantograph design way far forward and then the quilt builds up and pushes against the machine and this is exaggeration but if it pulls it back this far and i need to go back that far well then my laser light i can't go far forward to finish the design okay so the exact same thing goes for it down here. If I pull this machine back all the way, again, I could end up with some bulk here, even to the front a little bit. And then also I have to keep in mind these clamps, you know, these clamps are to the front. And if I run the machine and depend on the machine pulling all the way back, well, that's really not going to work. I could end up cutting off this edge of the design. So I need to try and make sure that the design stays in the middle, kind of in the sweet spot in the quiltable area on the frame. So that's why I placed the tape like this over my frame. Let me move the pantograph out of the way and we can talk about placing the tape so it really gives us a good guideline. First thing to do, pull your machine all the way over to the furthest side that your laser light is not on. So my laser light here is positioned on the back left side of my long arm. That's just where I placed it to get started. Uh, and that means that I have pulled the entire long arm over here all the way to the right hand side on the back side of the frame, okay? And then I can push this back and forth and I wanna watch out the uh, cute, this uh, Cunique machine has these little legs that stick out and they like to get hooked up a little bit on the frame So I need to make sure that I am clearing that and you can see here I can go all the way forward and all the way back Just fine. That's how far I can go with my long arm here on this frame So I'm gonna figure out how far I can go over and not have any obstruction So that's really kind of the limit of where I can push it the machine fully forward and fully back so now I lock that channel lock, so that way it's nice and straight. You see it's just going back and forward, and then I placed my tape to mark that line. And here's another thing, guys. Once you place your laser light and you're getting this marking done, really try not to move that laser light because that can kind of throw off this whole thing, okay? All right, so now I'll unlock that. Now let's talk about the back and forward limits here. These. Uh, horizontal limits that really guide you where to place the pantograph this way. Basically I pull back and I want to watch out. I want to make sure that my needle bar, this area is not hitting these clamps. I don't want to hit these clamps. I don't want to do that. Uh, so I want to kind of give myself a little bit more of space. Like let's say about an inch and a half or so, bring the machine, even if you're, it's your home machine, bring it forward a good inch and a half off this back bar. And that's where you're gonna use the side channel lock. That's your horizontal channel lock and that keeps the machine locked and it goes side to side. And that's how you place your tape to the back and then we'll unlock and go all the way forward. And then again, you kind of have to just 
guesstimate, you know, the biggest quilt you're possibly going to make on this frame, the thickest roll that it's going to be. You want to make sure it's not going to get too bulky in here. Take that into account. And it looks like I actually haven't really taken in a good, you know, I'm going to put my fist. I'm going to ball up my fist. Let's say my quilt is that big around. I'm going to put my fist there. I think that's a good guide, actually, between the back of the long arm and that back rail. I'm going to lock that down. And I think I'm actually going to move this piece of tape because I think that was just a little bit too far out because the risk here is if I push my, uh, my pantograph design and I put a pantograph design on here that is way too big, well, then I won't be able to complete it. As the quilt gets bigger and bigger and more and more space is being taken up in this area, then I won't be able to complete the design. My machine will hit that big roll of the quilt and it'll basically just like stop it and I'll be trying to, you know, stitch a nice design or something and I'll just be hitting that back of the quilt and it really won't work out well. Okay, so the only other place that you really need to watch out for is down here. So the other place you have to be really careful about not pushing it to the limit is down here on the side. And you can see I'm a good hmm, three, four inches away from this bar. There's a bar right here. And the main reason is I don't want to come in this close because look at what's going to happen. My laser light's sticking out here. And if I have that sticking out and I come back this far, well, then that laser light's going to get bumped. And I don't want that to happen. That can, as I said, throw everything off. So I'm going to say that the end of my quiltable space is right here. It's a little bit less space than I actually have, but it's kind of a safety net. It ensures that my laser light isn't going to get bumped while I'm quilting my panto. Okay, so now it's time to actually get our pantograph in place. And you can find this loopy line pantograph design at leahday.com slash panto. And this is available in a 12 foot long folded sheet. Now, obviously you don't need 12 feet whenever you're quilting on the Q-Zone frame, but you just take the excess and tuck it right there underneath the carriage. And the reason why we do that and don't cut the paper is because you really never know. You might end up with a bigger frame one day. Uh, you might rent time on a long arm and you want more space. So it's better to just keep it all as one long sheet and then just tuck it underneath and that works fine. Okay, so I can see where I am on the quilt and I like this location. That's where I want to get started. I'm going to translate that to the, uh, the laser light here and lock my channel locks. And that's really where I want to line up the dashed line on my pantograph with that laser light. And then I'm going to grab some tape and I like to use slightly thicker tape for securing the pantograph down just to ensure it doesn't move. You know, the tape that's on the frame is, you know, it's really, you kind of stick it there and then you don't really have to think about it ever again. But this tape that we put on the pantograph, you really want it to be the lighter masking tape. So that way you can easily take it off the paper. You don't want to damage the paper. And then also that it can take you know, it can be sticky enough to hold the paper in place because I put a little bit of tension on this. Okay, so that is in place and I'm going to roll the machine down. You can see that laser light is staying nice and straight on that dashed line. That's exactly what we want. And these dashed lines are unique to the pantographs that I sell and they really help you with advancing the pantograph, sorry, advancing the quilt. <laughs> through the frame uh, because they give you a guideline to work with and most pantographs don't have that just keep that in mind instead what you'll do uh, is line up with a line on the pantograph such as the bottom edge that will work instead okay so this is nicely secured in place and as I drag this back you know if it has adjusted ever so slightly or it's just wiggled up you know I can always just take this up and adjust it. This is what I mean by a little bit more tension. I give that a little bit of a tug. So I want that, I like the lighter masking tape for that step, just simply because it seems to hold in place better but not tear up my paper. I don't know if that's just me <laughs> or what, but that's the way it seems to work best. All right, so that's nice and flat. This looks like it's nicely secured. It is time to get started quilting. So just one last thing about the piece of paper, make sure no matter what, the paper doesn't move throughout the quilting process. 
that is the only thing that can really mess this up. So once you tape it down, that's really where it's going to be the whole rest of the time. Okay, so now we are ready to start quilting. I'm going to release my channel lock and pull it up here. And I'm just going to basically line up with a uh, line on the design. And it looks like I'm kind of referencing this also with the edge of the quilt, my plain fabric here. And that looks like a really great place to get started. So I'm going to hang on to my bobbin thread and then needle down, needle up, pull the machine away a little bit pull up that bobbin thread and then needle down again. And then over here, I can see I am right on the line and my laser lights lined up exactly right. So now I'm gonna turn on the machine and get started stitching. So it's just a matter of stitching smoothly and carefully on the line. Now, if you miss the line, you veer off of it, don't worry about it. Just try it and quilt smoothly and evenly. That's really your goal. Nice smooth movements. And this really works best when you don't have to worry about the quilt at all. That's why I use all the clamps, especially when I'm quilting with pantographs, because you don't want to have to worry about the fabric bunching or doing anything weird. It's always a good idea before quilting a pantograph to do a tension test to make sure your threads are looking really good, nicely balanced. Because really, when you're quilting from the back of the machine, all you're paying attention to is that laser light on that pantograph paper. And I'm really not paying attention to anything else. So just keep that in mind. Always do all of your you know, thread stitching tests, all that stuff, way before you begin quilting your panto across. Okay, so this absolutely feels nice and easy. I've got plenty of space to work in. Um, of course, this is only a four inch wide design, so it's not like it's very huge. I'm just quilting this little pass across my quilt, but it definitely feels speedy because I don't have to think about the design. I can just simply stitch on the line. I'm just focusing on staying on that line and making nice, smooth movements. Uh, I do have to shuffle my feet just a little bit to get further down. I think I'll stop here and adjust the camera so you can see me stitch all the way to the end. There you go. And then also that kind of just gives me a chance to shuffle my feet a little bit because you want to stay with your body kind of to the side of the back of the machine. Okay, here we go. Keep going. And one way to hide your stops and starts if you do click off the machine, always hide that where the, like a loopy line, where the line loops, that's a good place to hide that. Now, my quilting might not be absolutely perfect. You might see some wobbles and bobbles. Don't let that worry you. That's normal. You know, I'm kind of quilting cold. I didn't warm up before I began stitching this. So that's a little bit of it, but it's also just skill, the skill of following the marked line versus freehand quilting. And as you get more fluid with it, and especially as your body warms up, you're gonna be able to do a better job and have less wobbles and bobbles, I promise. Okay, so we're coming up here close to the end, and I'm gonna be careful not to stitch. I've got my guideline. I can kind of see it through the paper a little bit. I'm gonna put right up to that and then stop. Now I'm not gonna break thread. I'm just gonna stop. So about right there. Okay, so I've got needle in the down position and I am right there in the design. And what's lucky is this just happens to also correspond with kind of where I began the design on the other side because what we need to do at this point is advance the quilt side to side. We gotta figure out how this is gonna work on the Q-zone frame. So I'm gonna leave the needle in the down position, my foot in the down position, I am going to lock this side channel lock. It's a very important step for shifting the quilt side to side. So I took off my clamps. I took off the back straps, uh, my front clamps, side clamps, but I left this one clamp directly behind the machine, which was way on the side. I left that in place. And then I took the quilt and went shimmy, shimmy, shimmy all the way over. And it's loose enough that this clamp could stay in place. You can see it wiggles. So it was able to stay in place and that helped me keep the quilt nice and straight on the frame. So we are back on track. What I did was I basically marked on the pantograph design where I ended 
and then I found a corresponding mark on this side where I should begin. So I'm right on my design. Now I need to make sure that this quilt is reclamped nice and straight too. So here we go, popping on the back clamps. And visually what I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that I've got roughly the same amount of leader cloth. This is the very first part of this roll. Same amount of leader cloth here that's clamped and showing up to the front. And this looks good. I would say this is the one challenging bit about using the cues on frame for pantographs. The quilt does not start out straight. Obviously your pantograph will not be straight. So you wanna be really careful, take your time, making sure that this is clamped nice and straight to the frame. And this is one of those things I would say is an advantage of the continuum frame, the three rail frame that I have downstairs, is that you pin all the way across it and it is 100% straight. You don't have to do this side to side shift. Well, the one downside is uh, the size of that frame. You know, basically it has to be bigger than the size of quilt that I wanna create. Well, this particular, you know, plain fabric quilt top that I've created here, this is actually bigger than a quilt I could quilt on the continuum frame downstairs. So yeah, there's definitely some upsides and downsides to these different types of frames. And it's good to know that while the Q-Zone takes up a little bit less, you know, a lot less space, actually half the amount of space, you know, it is gonna be a little bit fiddly and um, making sure that your pantograph stays nice and straight. But there's gonna be lots and lots of tricks that we learn along the way, I'm sure, as far as keeping it nice and straight, making sure that it's not gonna slip and making sure that our quilt ends up absolutely perfect. Okay, so I'm clamping back my front clamps there. That looks good. And then now I can put on my side clamps too. Just give that a little rotate give that a little rotate. Now at the end of this row, I will want to run my line of basting stitches. As you can see, I did a basting stitch here. Well, I haven't done that yet, but you know, I don't want to get off track on my panto and this is looking good. Now it feels like I've got just a little bit of tension going on. It's probably because of this clamp. Yeah, you can actually see it. It's kind of the fabrics bubbling up here just a little bit around the foot. So I can lift my needle and just see if the machine and frame resets itself, you know, if it pulls back a little bit because of the, um, because of my channel locks being engaged and it did. So I'm gonna drop my foot down. So it looks like I need to release this clamp and push the fabric back just a little bit. Actually, I'll lift that foot up. It's okay if you make a messy stitch when you're learning something new, that is a-okay. Remember that, you gotta learn something new. It's gonna take a few messy stitches. All right, so you don't wanna clamp it too tight. That's obviously what you wanna be careful about, but this looks like it's back in place. It's looking good. I'm really pleased with this. Let's get back to the design and see how this is gonna work next. So you can see right here is where I ended the design and I placed a piece of tape right there. Then I went back through the panto and I took a look at where that uh, same loop happened in the design. And this just happened to be also right at the limit of my frame. So this was a great place to get started again. Uh, obviously I want to get started in the same place in the design. So that way it flows continuously and I don't have a sudden, you know, I'm not uh, right here in the design and then I suddenly start trying to quilt this. I have to match up with the same place in the design shifting side to side. So this is one of, gonna be one of those tricky things about using the Q-Zone frame for pantographs. So just be aware of that. <laughs> and I have to say, I'm still just kind of getting into this, figuring it out, uh, and we're definitely going to come up with faster methods for making this happen. But I'm really happy with where I am right now. I'm in the exact same place in the design. I've advanced the quilt side to side. I'm ready to get started again. So I'm gonna click on the machine. Oops, I need to make sure. I don't have my channel locks engaged. Woo, I have a little bit of a wobble there, but that's okay. This is another thing is that, you know, especially when you're learning something new, give yourself permission to make a few mistakes, to make some ugly stitches, and to understand that that's a okay. So as you can see now, once everything is shifted over, it's a very simple process of just simply stitching that pantograph design from edge to edge again. Now we're gonna have one more shift 
through the machine again. We're gonna work through that step by step. I think I have a few more ideas for making this just a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. So I stitched across again. I'm ready for my last shift back through the frame. And I wanted to just talk through taking off the clamps and why I leave this particular back clamp on as I shimmy, shimmy, shimmy it over. And the reason being, uh, it just helps lock the quilt to the frame so it doesn't go all loosey goosey on you as you shift it over. So here I'm taking off all of the black clips, the metal clips with the black straps, but I'm just leaving this particular clamp in place. Okay, so now with that like that, I'm gonna roll up the excess quilt here so that way I can have a good grip on it. I'm gonna grab the leader cloth and I have locked my channel locks down so the machine can move side to side but not forward and back. So it is channel locked in place. Now the one thing you have to keep in mind is that these hooks are hooks and they can grab a hold of things. So you might wanna even just grab it like this and just grip it from that back clamp. And that can kind of work a little bit too. And almost there. Just a little bit more of a shimmy over. Looks like there, right like that. Okay, so the trickiest part that I found with the last shift is the fact that we're right at the very beginning of this quilt and I've got leader cloth here. Now, if I had the three layers of the quilt being clamped, it would be more secure and stable. More rolled up on this back leader cloth makes this entire thing more stable. So what I found, and the reason why I had like a little bit of a wobble before my next, the rest of my row um, began is because I had that little bit of excess play in my fabric. So this time I'm gonna take this and I'm actually going to reclamp it because my channel locks are in place that's holding it securely in place. It's not going anywhere. And I'm keeping an eye on my laser light on the pantograph, making sure that the laser doesn't get off, meaning that I'm not pulling and clamping this so tight that it's pulling the quilt forward or back. It's not shifting the position basically. So this is dead on, it's looking great. Now I just need to make sure that it stays straight across. And this is where I think it's gonna be tricky because it's obviously easy to kind of veer the quilt from one direction to another. So here I think, look at your leader cloth carefully. And for me, where it's clamped, I can't see uh, any of the black marks on the leader cloth to the front of that clamp. So I'm making sure with these other clamps I'm putting in place that it has the same situation where it's clamped and I basically can't see the ends of the, of the plus signs on the leader cloth. Now, if your leader cloth is different or you've used regular fabric, you could mark lines across it. You know, you could do a lot of different things that would help you kind of have a visual guide there. I definitely think that's gonna be something I'm gonna be thinking about a lot. I am still, the laser light still lined up perfectly with my uh, pantograph design. So it's perfectly on the spot. And now I'm gonna do my side clamp. Now, whenever I have quilt, but no um, space to reach the side, so it's not over here where I can actually put the clamp down, I take my side leader cloth, place it on that. I grab three pens. And as you can see, I still can't even reach it even with this piece of fabric. So that's when I also grab my black clamps. And this is how this works. I grab my clamp, this is the, the plastic piece, that goes underneath and clamps like that. And then I take these and they have kind of a white plastic piece and that slots through the top of that side clamp. So I'm gonna do two of those on that side. It just takes a few seconds to get that set up. No big deal. And I've already kind of got it set up nice and tight. I'm just gonna fold that leader cloth over and secure that in place. Okay, so that's looking good. We're on track. And then now I'm making sure that I'm not getting any kind of weird bubble or anything right here around the needle. I've got my needle in the down position. I've got my foot in the down position. I've got my channel locks engaged. 
that still means that if I put too much tension on the quilt, it can be pulling the long arm in a subtle way forward or back, and that could throw things off. And this is why I'm gonna put this clamp on, and I'm just going to click it a little bit. I'm not gonna click it super tight. That looks good. And one more. Okay. So I am still, the laser light is perfectly lined up on my pantograph design. It's exactly where I wanna get started. Now the real test of this is, is this needle, is the foot going to move whenever I release my channel locks? And it didn't. So I was a lot more careful this time about not pulling it too tight and potentially throwing that off. Now another test will be a needle up, needle down. So I needled up and needled down and I didn't have any kind of, it didn't, the machine didn't move like a quarter inch away like it did the last time. So I think this is gonna be an important thing uh, use your channel locks when you do your shimmy over. I do like leaving that back clamp in place. I think it just gives me a little bit more control to push the whole quilt over. But understand you might have to take that off, do a little bit of a shift and wiggle. But what you're gonna depend on the most with this whole thing is your side channel lock because that's locking the quilt in position. And then you're also really using your laser and pinpointing that on the pattern. Okay, so we're back in place, ready to finish this row. So the real test is if you can just actually click the machine on and begin stitching and not have a noticeable blip there. And it's not really because of the side to side shift, it's more because it's kind of hard to stop and start in a pantograph. You know, it's like kind of just one of those kind of blippy kind of things. So keep that in mind. I definitely think this is going to be one of those things that requires practice and experimentation. And I'm having a great time learning more about this. Now, I just realized I see these clamps are hanging here. I actually forgot to clamp these in place. So yeah, get those in place, lock that down. And of course, everything will be a whole lot more secure. <laughs> Don't forget to do that. Okay, back on track. I'm gonna slow down just a little bit and see if that helps me form this design just a little bit smoother. I'd say the more you do any pantograph design, whether it's loopy line or curvy chevron or single wave, the more you repeat those shapes, well, the more practice you're gonna get with it and the better you're gonna be at that design. And what's nice is, you know, especially a design like loopy line, you know, that's a freehand design. You can quilt that without the pantograph. And this is giving you a lot of practice of those movements. So that hopefully, you know, eventually you get to a point where you don't need the pantograph anymore and you can do this freehand. But it's a lot of fun to be able to do the pantograph too because that gives you a nice repeating design across your quilt. So that's it for this video. I definitely learned a lot about pantographs today. I don't know about you, but this is definitely gonna be something that requires a lot more practice and fiddling around with these designs and figuring out how it's gonna work best with the side to side shift. I do think that it's absolutely essential to use your channel locks. That's a really important feature on the machine. Definitely use it. Um, still playing around with how to do that side to side shift smoothly. So that way there's no blip or wobble in the design as you begin your next, pretty much like starting and finishing your row. Um, I did veer and I veered by about an inch. What that means is basically as I shifted the quilt from side to side, yeah, I got it, I, instead of like loosening it and having the quilt slip this way, I was actually tightening up too much in the back rail so that the design ended up kind of veering upwards. So it was an inch and a half from the edge of the quilt at the beginning, and now it's a half of an inch from the edge of the quilt at the end. Now this is not a deal breaker. And on a particular quilt, you know, if I do rows and rows and rows of loopy lines, you're probably not gonna be able to notice that. But this is gonna be one of those things that I think is a challenge on the Q-Zone frame, far more than it is on our traditional three rail frame, because this type of frame is a clamping system. Uh, it's a hoop. It's not uh, a rail where you pin once and it's done. You know, this shifting side to side, is it's gonna make it a little bit trickier. I do think it's essential to use your channel locks whenever you're shifting from side to side. I think that definitely helped. Uh, still playing around with how the clamps stay on and shifting that over. I do think that helps a little bit too, but it might even be something that we need to mark. We need to mark some straight lines across the quilt. 
we need to break thread a little bit and use our channel locks and double check ourselves using the channel locks and moving the machine around a little bit more. I'm gonna play with this. I'm gonna dig into it and do some experimenting, but I hope that you learned a lot just seeing straight out of the gate how I would approach pantographs on the Q-Zone frame. And in a month or two, I will update and share new ideas and hopefully a few quicker methods <laughs> that work even better. Uh, so definitely stay patient with that. Keep playing, keep practicing, because I promise you, it's never perfect the first time you do anything. It's always a learning experience. So that's it for this video. If you'd like to see more videos on the Q-Zone frame, as well as check it out, you can put your home machine on it, or you can put the Grace Cunique 15R or 14 plus, and you can check out all of that at leahday.com slash Q-Zone. And don't forget to use the coupon code, hello, my quilting friends, all one word to save $100 on your quilting frame or machine from leahday.com. Until next time, let's go quilt.